Hello, and welcome back to the second of a three-part series on building a point-of-sale system inside a script case. So this is a multi-part video series, as I mentioned, and the first part we've already done, so if you haven't watched that, if you're just starting now, I'd like to invite you to go back and listen to that first part, watch that first part, because in the first part, we cover the back-end system of this point-of-sale system. We cover managing all the back-end data and all of that. So that's everything under this maintenance menu here. So there's a lot there. So I'd encourage you to go back and watch that just to see how that all works and is put together. In this video, we're going to focus on the sales system. So this is the actual sales system that would be used to check customers in and out. So here we have our final product here. This is what we're going to be building, what we're going to be, what we're going to have when we're all completed with this. And let's click on sales. This is what we're going to work on. And so I've already shown you this in the last video, but I'm going to go over it one more time just so you know where we're going with this. So we have this first application here. This is showing the last sale. So this is the ID and the date of the last sale along with this little cash register image. And then we click generate to generate a new sale. And then here we have a dashboard application. So a dashboard application is a place where you can show multiple different applications at one time. The first one is up here on top. It runs lengthwise. And this is the actual new sale form. So this allows us to set the date, set the state of the sale, whether it's active, eliminated, or inactive. And then also show the amount, which will be updated once we actually finalize the sale. Our second application that we have shown inside of our dashboard is this one right here. This is our products application here. This is a grid that's put in slide orientation. I'll show you all how to do that in a second. Um, but this shows all of our products here. And we have a refined search here, so we can refine the list of products down by the category of products like this. And we can also search for the products here, either by code or by name. So if we typed in something there, we could look up products. Once we find the product we want, we can click on it, and that's going to reload this widget over here, this area over here. And this is our actual payment application. So here it's going to list all of our products that we have added to this sale, all the line items, and the total amount. We can also adjust the quantity of each individual product using the plus and minus buttons here. So there I just increased the quantity by one, and then I can again decrease it back, or I can click on the trash can icon here to delete the product entirely from our sale. Let's add a product back on now. Once we've finished the sale and, and added everything to it, we can click pay right here. This will allow us to actually pay for it. So we can pay with cash. And if we pay with cash, we can enter the amount, the exact cash that the customer gave us. So let's say maybe they gave us $150 when the total amount is $125. And when we click OK, it'll print out a receipt here. So this is just a PDF here. And if we go back, it'll also tell us the amount of change that is due to the customer. We can also pay with card and a check. And that time we'll be using the exact amount of money so we won't have to calculate change. But each time when we click OK, It'll print out the receipt like it did right here. So let me zoom in on that. This is meant to be printed out as a receipt, so it's quite small. But it prints the ID, the item number, the price, and the total amount, as well as the total for the entire sale. And then a little note thanking the customer for their purchase. So let's get started with building this. So I'm over here in my script case development environment here. And as you can see, we already have the applications we created in the last video. These are our maintenance system setup applications. And we first need to do a little bit of house cleaning before we can get started with setting up our sales system. Let's start using folders to organize these different applications into so that we can find them more easily. So let's take all of these applications and put them in a folder called system. To do that, we need to go over here to the folders menu and click this button right here. And we're going to type in our name for this folder. So we're gonna call it system like that, since these are all the system applications. Hit create on that. 
And now we have our system folder and we're viewing it right here that we don't have anything in it yet. So let's go back to our root folder. Let's select all of these applications here and choose the move button right down here at the bottom. And we're going to move it to the system folder right there. Click move. It asks us if we really want to, and yes, we do. Okay, and let's view our system folder. And there are all of our applications right there. And that didn't affect any of our links or anything. So that's all set up and ready to go. So now it's just more organized for us. So let's create a new folder for our new sales applications that we're going to build. So to do that, let's go back to our root folder so that it creates it there. Click the new folder icon here. We're going to name it sales like so and click create. And that will create our new sales folder and we're already in that folder viewing it. The first thing we need to do is create the new sale application. That was that initial application we saw that showed the last sale and then allowed us to create a new sale. That's going to be a control application. So let's click new application here. Choose control. And we're gonna name this new sale like so and click create on it. And the first thing we need to do is add fields to this control application. So let's go to fields right here and click new field. We're going to add two fields. So if you remember from the demo, the control application, the new sale control application had two fields. It had the logo there, the little cash register there, and it also had the ID and date of the last sale. So the first one is going to be just a label, and I'll show you how to set that up with a little icon in it. And the second one is going to be another label as well. We're going to name these. So I'm going to name the first one image, and the second one is going to be last sale, like so. And we're not going to put a label on there because we're not going to display the labels at all. We'll get to that in a second. So first, let's set up our image here. So for that, I'm going to copy a little bit in here for this label text here. So this is a little bit of HTML, and it's also using the font awesome icons. So right here is where we're putting that register image. So that's included with font awesome, which is included inside of script case. We're putting a couple of empty lines on there, telling it the center, giving it some styling. You could customize this however you wanted to make it look however you wanted. But that's how we set that up. It's pretty simple. And then the last sale will be calculated with some code that we're going to do. So for the code, we need to put it in the events. So let's go over here to events. Let's go to the onload event. So I'm going to copy some more code in here. The onload event is the first event that gets called as the UI of the form starts loading. So as you see, I have some queries here. I'm selecting from the sales table. So that's our table with all of our sales in them. And we're ordering it by the descending ID. So that's going to grab the last sale because the first record in this set returned is going to be the last sale. And then we're just limiting that to one record since we only need the first one. We're executing that query here and saving it to the variable called ds here. As long as it's not empty, then we're assigning here the last sale value. So we're using the curly braces, which is assigning it to that field. We're doing an empty line right here. And then we say the last sale is this value here, which is going to be the ID, since the ID is the first value pulled out. And then the date, which is the third value pulled out here. So that's going to be in the second spot of the array, like so. And then we have one more item. We're creating this global variable right here. This variable is going to be called ID sale. And we're going to use this throughout all of our sale applications to keep track of which sale we're looking at. So we're going to save that as a global variable, and then we can pass it around to all the other applications for this. So that's going to be the, the last ID right there plus one, because it's going to auto increment up one to the next available ID number like that. Okay, so that's how we assign a value to the last sale field. So let's go ahead and run 
save that. And then let's go ahead and set the settings for this variable here. Since it is an output variable, we need to tell Scriptcase not to expect it as an input variable. So let's go over here to Application and Global Variables. And for this variable, ID Sale, change it to an output variable. Let's hit Save on that. And then the last thing we need to do is actually create the new sale record inside of our database. So to do that, we need to put that code in the onValidate event right here. So let me copy some more code and paste it in here. Okay, so we've got another query here. So this is just an insert query. It's inserting the total, the date, and the state ID. And the values for that is going to be zero for the total, since we don't know it now. The date is going to be the current date time right here. And the state ID is going to be one, which will be active. So that'll automatically set this sale to an active state. We execute that query. And then on the execution of that, we're going to redirect to the dashboard application here. So that application isn't created yet, but it will be created. It'll be one of the last applications we create. So that won't work quite yet. But just so you know that that's where we're going with that. So let's go ahead and run this. We've got a couple of things with the UI to set up still. Well, let's go ahead and run it and see what it looks like. So wait for the code to generate here. All right, so here it is all generated and it looks pretty close to what we want. However, there's one thing with the UI that we want to change and that is these labels here. We don't really need them. It's pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of those. So let's go back here. And to do that, we need to edit the block. So we're going to go to Layout, Blocks right here. This is the block that we put everything in. And then we need to tell it to not display the labels here. So we just uncheck that box. And let's go ahead and run this. OK. And there it is with our item centered without any labels. And then we can also change this button to show something other than OK. So let's go back here. And let's go to uh, toolbar here. And on the OK button, let's overwrite the default to be generate, to generate a new sale. So let's run this one last time and we should be done with this. OK, so there is our generate button. And if we click this, it'll create a new sale and then try to redirect to our dashboard, which isn't yet created. We'll get to that in a minute. But for now, let's move on. So now let's create our first application that we saw on that dashboard. And that is the form for the sales. So let's go back here and let's create a new form application. So I'm going to click new application and form. So we're going to click New Application. We're going to choose Form. And let's select our table here. So it's going to be our sales table. We can name it Form Sales like that. And then click Create. OK, so here we have it. Let's go ahead and edit the fields here. So we only need some of these fields. We don't need the ID field. So let's go ahead and take that off the display. And let's start with the date and then the total and then the state like this. And this is going to be a select. So let's go ahead and edit this. We can save the changes. This is going to be like we saw on the maintenance applications. It's pulling from the states table to show the actual state. So here in the lookup type, we're going to create select. The key field, so that's what's saved in the database, is going to be the ID. And the field that's shown on screen is going to be the state. So let's go ahead and select our state table here. The ID and then the state shown on screen. There we go. So that should be set up. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. All right, so here it is all loaded. 
So you might remember that all of these were displayed in one row like this. So let's go ahead and change that so it only shows one long row instead of them all stacked up. That'll look best on our dashboard. So let's go back here to our form for our sales here. And let's go down to layout blocks again. And let's change the number of columns. So let's change it to three columns instead of one. And then that will automatically split all the fields up into those three columns. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. Okay, so here we have all those fields split up into three different columns all across the screen like so. And then let's go ahead and change this total field so it's read only. So we need to go back here to edit fields and then choose read only, check that box for the total. So let's run that and it should show it as read only. Okay, so there it is as read only. So that's all we need to do for this right now. That will be linked into our dashboard later. So now let's keep moving ahead and this time we need to create a application to show all of our products for the user to select. So let's go ahead and go back here. This is going to be a grid application. Let's click new application here and choose grid and choose our products table. That's what it's going to be pulling from. And we're gonna call that grid products command like so. Let's hit create on that. So this is a little bit different grid. This is going to be a slide orientation. And it's going to start with the search. If, we, if you remember from the dashboard, it had the search bar displayed right up top there. So let's choose the initial module to be the search like this. And then let's choose grid. And the orientation is going to be slide like so. Okay. So the table width, we can leave that everything to default like so, and then that'll put it in a slide orientation like that. Let's hit save on that. And then let's go ahead and decide which fields we want on screen. So we're going to go to edit fields and we only need three fields. We need the name, the image and the price. So let's take everything else off. We don't need to worry about them for this grid. And let's put the image on. Let's hit save on that. And let's edit the size of the image. So this is the image of the product from the database. Let's make it 50 by 50 and see what that looks like here. That might be a little bit big still, but let's go ahead and run this and see how it's looking. Okay, so it's only showing the uh, results for the searching. It's not showing the actual grid itself. And we're gonna change that in just a second. But let's leave all these blank for now. We'll modify those fields in a minute. Let's hit search so we can kind of see these here like this. Okay, so that's what that looks like here. So we've got the name on top and then the image in between and then the price on the bottom for each one. We're going to clean this up a little bit more so that we're gonna take these labels off and allow it to wrap and all that. But let's get the searching set up properly. So let's go back here to grid modules here. And under the search module, we need to use, we need to select it to use the iframe. So let's click yes on that. And let's run that and it should display our grid along with our searching. There we go, so there it is right there. And then let's edit which fields are in the search. So for that, we need to go to search here on the left, go to advanced search, select field, and let's just do the code and the name. So let's take everything else off and just do the code and the name. So let's move code up here and let's hit save on that. And now let's take the labels off of this. So we don't need all these labels here, so let's take them off. So to do that, we need to go to layout, blocks, just like we did on the last applications. And we just need to uncheck the box here for labels. And let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got our code field here and our name field here for searching. And then we've also got the labels removed for this. 
Okay, so now let's take this detail button off. We don't need that. So to do that, we need to go to grid modules again and uncheck the detail module. And we also don't need the summary and the chart module like so. Let's save that. And then let's do one more thing to the UI. Let's make it so that these items here are not one per line. Let's make it five per line so they kind of go across and this page isn't quite so long like that. So let's go here to settings here on the left and columns per page. We need to do five columns per page like so. And let's hit run on that and see what it looks like. Okay, so that looks a lot nicer now with the five per page. And let's go ahead and take this header off now. So let's go to layout, header footer, and take that header off. We don't need to display that. Let's save that and run it here. Okay, so that looks a lot better now. So now we need to make it so that we can click one of these images like we saw in the demo and it will insert it into our sale as one of the line items for that and take us to the payment application. But before we can get that far, we need to first create an application to just insert this item into the sale itself. So if you remember from our database, we had a sale table and then a sales detail table with all the line items for that sale. So let's create a new blank application here. Name it like so. So it's inserting into the sales detail table. So here's some code I'm going to copy right here. And let me explain this. So we've, we are setting up some variables here at the top. So first is the sale ID. So that is that ID sales that we created right at the beginning with that new sale application. So that's going to be passed through to this. And then also we have the cost, which is going to be passed through again from here using this cost variable right here and the price as well. And then the quantity, which is just going to be one initially. And then the ID of product. So that's the ID for this. And then once that is done, we can look and see if there's already a line item for that. So let's say they clicked it twice. So it would just increment the quantity the second time. So that's just an update. So if there's already a line item for this product in this sale, it would update it and just increase the quantity by one. Otherwise, if this is a new line item added, a new product added to the sale, then it would insert into that table, creating a new record with a quantity of one. And then once that is done, it'll go to our grid detail sales, which we'll set up in a second. So let's go ahead and save this. And we can go ahead and generate the code as well. And this really isn't meant to be ran on its own. It's meant to be ran from a link from our command application. So let's go ahead and go back to our command application and link them together. So we're going to go to application links here, create a new one here. This is going to be a field link and we're going to put it on the image so that they can click the image. So choose the image, click create or next. And then we're going to choose our insert detail sales detail application that we just created. Click next on that. And as you can see, we have all these parameters set up. So these are the ones that we put in over here in our code. So it knows to expect them over here when we link them together. For the ID sales, we're not going to put anything in because that'll already be put into our session by the create new uh, sale application. For the cost, we're going to pass through the cost of this. So that's going to be the cost field. The price, we're going to pass through the price field. And for the product, we're going to pass through the ID for that product right there. And let's hit confirm on this. We can leave it in the same window like this, that we're actually going to modify that in a little bit. But once that is done, we can just hit save like this. And now let's run this and it should work to click on this and go to it. So we can click on this and it will give us an error here because our sale ID is not fully set up because we didn't run this in the dashboard with the new sale, everything that will be setting up that variable. So in a second, we'll get to see how this works. But now let's create that third application we saw here 
the grid detail sales. So that's going to show all the line items for this sale in it and allow us to increment, decrement, and delete the line items from the sale. So that's going to be another grid application here. So let's click, let's copy that name here and let's click new application. And choose grid. And let's choose our table. So that's going to be our detail sales table. And we can name it grid detail sales like that. And let's click create. So the first thing we need to do with this is modify the query so that it only gets the sales, the sale items that are relevant to our current sale. So let's go to SQL. And this is good pretty much, except we need to put a where clause in it. So it's only going to get the sales where the sale ID equals our variable um, ID sale, like that. So that's our var variable that is created when we generate a new sale and it's saved in our session. So let's hit save on that. That will limit our data set. And then we need to choose which fields we want on screen. So for this, we need the product ID first. We don't need the ID. We can leave it down here at the bottom. Of the and then we want the quantity and the total. And then we want the quantity, and then we can take the unit price and unit cost off. We aren't worried about that right now. And then we need to create those other fields. So if you remember, we had the minus button and the plus button in addition to the trash icon to delete them and a total field. So let's create those fields now. So those are four total fields. So we create four of them. Let's click next. And the image ones are going to be HTML images. And then the last one is going to be a currency like so. So we're going to name one of these more, one of these less. So that's going to add or decrement. And then one of these delete like so. And we're not going to worry about labels for these. And then this one is going to be total. So for the more, we need to add an image to this. So I already have one added here. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to Project, General Images. It's where, where our images are. And choose the addition one and add it here. And we don't need it to display a label. So that should be set up. Let's hit Save on that. Let's do less now. So this is going to be the same type of thing, but with a different image. Choose the subtraction one. Add that, get rid of the label, and then also our delete button here. Get rid of that label, and then choose the trash icon right here. So that should set up our images, and then our total is right here, and we'll calculate that in a second. So now let's position these fields. So let's go to edit fields again. And we want more to be first right here after the product ID and then the less field, and then the delete is going to be put at the end. And let's go ahead and take the sale ID off here. And then we can put the ID right here at the end like so. And take the label off that. So let's go ahead and look at this and see what it looks like now. So let's run this. And as you can see, it's expecting our sale ID variable to be passed in, which will be passed in using the session variable. For, but for now, we can put in a ID that I know is valid. So let's hit that and let's go ahead and run that. And here we have it here. It looks like it's running fine. It's got our product ID, our plus and minus, our quantities, and our total here, which is not set yet. And our trash icon, as well as our sale ID here. So let's go ahead and change some of this. Let's make this so it is a lookup that shows the actual product name. Let's do that first. So let's go to product ID. And we're going to put a lookup in there that is automatic and create a select. That's going to look at our products table. We've done this before. 
And the key field is the ID and the field shown is the name. Let's hit save on that. That should be working. Let's take this detail option off right here. We don't need that. So we're going to go to grid modules and uncheck the detail as well as the summary and the chart. We don't need any of those. Let's hit save on that. And then lastly here, let's calculate this total right here. So to do that, we need to go into events and we need to go to the on record event. So this is when each record is going to get loaded. And this total is going to be the result of the quantity times the cost. So let me grab some code for that. It's just one line of code here. So here it is. It's the total, which is going to equal the unit price times the quantity like that. So let's go ahead and run this and see how all these changes look. Okay, so here we have it. We have a quantity of eight and then our total is gonna be 120. Now, let's make it so all these buttons here also work. So if I click these, nothing's gonna happen right now. So now let's do this with some Ajax events. So let's close these up. Let's go to Ajax events here. Let's create a new Ajax event. We need to select the field on which the event is going to occur. So let's start with the more button here. And the event is going to be the on click event. We'll pass through the ID here. And let's click create event. And then I've got some code here. I'm going to copy in again and I'll explain how it works. So here's another query. We're updating the detail sales and we're setting the quantity field equal to what it is plus one. We're just incrementing it by one where the ID equals the ID that is on that record. Then we just execute that SQL and then refresh the screen to show the new quantity like that. And that will update our quantity field as well as our total field. So let's save that. So we've made the plus button work. Let's make the minus button work. So that's the more, the less field. So let's click a new Ajax event. Choose the less field here. The on click event again. Pass through the ID field. Click create event. And I've got a little bit more code here. So here we have the quantity field. We need that as well. So let me pass that through too. So I'll check that, I'll just double click it down there and it passes it through as a parameter. And then we have another update event. So if it's greater than one, it's just gonna update it and set the quantity equal to the quantity minus one for that ID of the detail line item. Then execute it and refresh the page. So let's hit save on that, that should be all set up. And then lastly, we need to make this trash button work here to delete the item from the screen. So let's click new Ajax event. We're gonna choose the delete button here, the on click event, pass through the ID again, click create. And let me copy just a little bit more code. Be very much like before, except this time it is a delete statement here. So it's gonna delete the row with the ID of this row right here, execute the SQL and refresh the screen like so. So let's run this and see if these works. Okay, so we're gonna enter our dummy sale here. Let's click the plus button and see if it adds it. And there it did. So now we have a quantity of 16 and our amount was incremented as well. Let's hit the minus button. So now it's 15 and our amount decreased. Now let's delete one of these. So let's delete this one here. And there we go, now it's off the screen. So that works as expected with everything. So that's pretty much everything that we need to set up the events for the sales. All right, so now that we've gotten most of the sales application set up, we still need to set up a couple, but we'll get to those in the next video. But since we've got most of them, what we need to do now is set up a dashboard to view all these different applications in. So if you remember our new sale application, redirected to our dashboard application, which we hadn't set up yet. So let's get that set up now. So let's go to new application. And we're going to select dashboard here. 
and we can name it dashboard like that because that's the name we used in our new sale application. Okay, so a dashboard is just a place to put multiple different applications to kind of view them in different iframes. And those iframes are called widgets. So those are those areas on screen where we can put different applications. We already have one widget set up by default. And we're gonna make that a little bit smaller. We can just grab these arrows down here, and make it a little more narrow. And now we just need to link it to an application. So if you remember from our final product, this was the new sale form. So let's click the edit icon here. And we can click the link here and it will take us to all of our applications. So we need the form sales application like this. And then let's go to the properties. And we're gonna take all these extra options off. We don't need these for this. So we'll go ahead and take those off like so. And let's hit save on that. Okay, so that's one widget. Now we need to create two other widgets. Remember the one here on the left was the products grid that we could select to add a new product. And then the one on the right was the sales item list, the detail sales list listing all the items in the sale. So let's set up this one here on the left. Let's click add link widget here. We just leave it, name it widget two and let's link it to our product command grid. So here it is, that's that grid that we created. And here we can tell it where to redirect this link here. So there's this link and we can tell it where to put the target. Let's leave it to the default, but we'll come back and edit it in a second. Let's hit save on that. And now that we've got this, we need to rearrange it. So let's bring widget two down here below widget one. And it needs to take up about half the screen like so and then we'll make it nice and long as well. Now let's create a third widget. And this is going to be our detail sales grid. And let's hit save on that. And then let's arrange it down here like so, just like the second widget, make it nice and wide and also nice and long like that. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. This isn't quite done. We've got a few UI changes and then also a logic change before we finish this off. But as you can see, all the items are here. We've got our new sale form here. We've got our products that we can add here. And then we also have our grid detail sales right here, which there are no records for right now. But we're gonna to get to that in a second. First, we need to take this header info off. We didn't quite get that done. We did take it off this first widget, but not here. So let's go back. Let's click edit again on these properties. And we just need to uncheck all of these boxes. We'll do that for both of the widgets. So that way none of the widgets will show any header information. Hit save and let's run this one more time just to make sure everything with the UI is all set up. Okay, so that looks better now. We've got this set up without any header information and this as well. So now we need to make it so that when we click this, this link right here, it goes and reloads this area instead of this area. Because if I click it right now, it will add the item there to our sale, but it does it in this area. So we just need to change the target of that link back there. So let's go back to our dashboard. And that is that option we saw before. So right here, that is that link, that is that redirect. And the target, we need to set it to widget three. So let's hit save on that. And widget three is of course this widget over here. That is what we named it right here. So let's click run on this. And it has the item we just added before, but this time when we click another item, it should reload over here and not over here. So let's click an item here. And there it worked just like we expected. It added the item right here instead of over here. So that's all set up and working. So in the next video, we'll get into how to set up a payment form for this and also printing a receipt. And then we'll get into the cart side of this point of sale system. So I hope this was helpful for you and I can't wait to show you what we're gonna do in the next video.